Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video, I will talk about the affine transformation. What is affine transformation and how can we achieve it using a Python code? If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, then please do so in order to watch more programming videos. So let us get started. Let us first look at the theory part. If you don't like the theory, then please skip it to the coding part. It says that in affine transformation, what all are preserved and what all are not preserved. Points, straight lines and planes are preserved. Set of parallel lines remains parallel and the ratio of distances between the points lying on same straight line are also preserved. Okay. And what all are not preserved? The angle between the lines and the distance between the points may not be preserved. This is because they may not be in the same 2D plane as they originally were. Therefore, the angle may seem to differ and the distance can also differ. Okay, due to the change in plane. So, in affine transformation, we actually need three points in the original input image and three points in the original output image. Okay, these three points and these three points are the corresponding points. Okay, so this point here is equals to this point here so why we need these three points in original and transformed images so that we can make the algorithm understand what type of transformation do we really want okay so if this point is a then this point is also a if this is b then this is b and this c is corresponding to this c so this is saying that suppose this is 50 comma 50 then we are transforming it to say 30 comma 100 or something like that then the machine can understand that is the algorithm can understand what what points will be corresponding to what point okay so using these three points the algorithm will come to know about the transformation and so will apply the required transformation okay so let us now quickly look at the code I have already included these three libraries numpy cv2 and pyplot from matplotlib okay so the next thing which i need to do is i will just read the image using cv2.imread and my image name here is a table name okay table.jpg so let me quickly show you what is my present working directory this is my image you can see that this is my image table.jpg and I will apply affine transformation on it. So let us just store the rows columns in this image.shape. Okay. This image.shape will return the shape of our image. And now let me define my point. This is point one. Point one is defined in our original image which will contain three points okay so np dot float 32 and we will define the three points as let's say 50 comma 50 then the next point as 200 comma 50 and the next point as 50 comma 200 we should make sure that these three points should not be collinear at all okay these three points should not be collinear if they are collinear then the transformation will fail or will give wrong results okay now the next point we will take is np.float32 and let's say we take this time 10 comma 100 the next point as 200 comma 50 and the next point as 100 comma 250 you can take any point but i have taken these points from the internet okay so let me define a matrix this matrix will be used for our transformation okay so get affine transform and we will feed the point one and point two into our transform function in order to form the matrix and the next thing we will do is we will calculate the new image pixels using the function cv2 dot warp affine okay and i will give the original image matrix and the newly formed matrix for the transformation they will be multiplied and operated 
and finally i will give the resolutions so let me put the resolution as columns comma rows so that the original resolution is preserved okay it this is the same as the original image and we have formed the new image the next thing we will do is we will plot it so use the pie plot function plt dot subplot one two one so this one this first one is is saying that this entire frame it is considering this entire frame as single now writing two divides this entire frame into two parts and then writing one is saying that we are taking the first half okay so we are considering the entire screen as a single frame this two is saying that this single frame is divided into two parts and this one is saying that we are taking the we are taking the first part okay so we have declared what region we want suppose we want the left region okay and then we will just show we will just show what we want so we want to show the image and then we'll put the title of the image as let's say is input okay the next thing we will do is we will display the output image plt dot subplot you consider the entire screen as a single frame divide it into two parts and we are taking the second second region now that means the right hand side okay and now i will just print it plt dot im show okay and the new image name and the title to be plt dot title output okay output what we need to do now is we need to show it i think our code is complete and let us just run it okay this is not saved let me save it first save as in dos and yes i have saved the code let me see it yes it's appearing copy paste and let me see whether it's running or not it's saying there are too many values to unpack an error has come okay in line number 6 so our image was a colored image so it should be three dimensional rows columns and channel because a colored image will have three channels so we need three dimensions and now we will run it and we can see that the input and output images are on the different regions i was saying about the pie plot function subplot uh, this input is in the first half this output is in the second half and this entire frame is divided into two parts therefore this one is 1 to 1 this one is 1 to 2 okay so this was our original image nicely pictured in 2d and this is transformed using a fin transformation you can see that this is not only a rotation but a 3d rotation you can say okay so this is only possible if we can provide three points in the input image which are not collinear and three points in the output image corresponding to those three points in the input image okay so this is how affin transformation works i hope i was able to make you understand affin transformation and if you find this video helpful then please hit the like button and subscribe for more such videos if you have any type of problem or if you want to see any more videos then please comment below see you in our next video thank you